Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Amma ba'd. Before I forget, inshallah, I want to draw your attention to an historical incident and event that took place last week. Inshallah, you brothers and sisters can go back to the YouTube and check it out. There is a brother, a revert brother. His name is Tahir Wyatt. Tahir Wyatt. His kunya is Abu Abdul Razak. I met the brother maybe about 15 years ago, something like that. Maybe more, maybe less. Allahu alam. Anyway, he was accepted to go to the University of Al Medina in Saudi Arabia. He went, he learned the Arabic language in the institute there. And then after that, he went to the faculty of Al Hadith, where he excelled academically for four years. And then they accepted him to do his masters and he completed his masters and at the moment he's about to complete his PhD in Shah That's not historic. Well it is historic because he would be the first African American revert Muslim who is getting a PhD from that prestigious university. But bigger than that and more important than that is the fact that last week he was given an opportunity to give the first lesson in English in the Prophet's Masjid, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I believe on three days of the week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm not sure what those days are, but three days every week, he will be teaching in the Prophet's Masjid, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, giving a class in English. That never happened, ever. Just happened last week. One of the books that he will be teaching, from what I understand, is the 40 Hadith of Al-Imam Nawawi. And you have to understand, especially for those of you who have not been to that masjid, it's a place where all of the Muslims from across the globe are going to go and take that journey to al Medina. So people who speak English, whether it's their mother tongue or it's their second tongue, they go into that masjid and they have an opportunity to sit and to learn their religion in English from this brother. One of the reasons why I'm bringing this to your attention is because I, for one, Abu Usama, although I'm older than that brother, and although I had studied in Medina and graduated from Medina before he even went, and I met him before he went, myself, I'm not a hater. I'm happy for the brother. As an African-American revert Muslim, I am extremely proud of his accomplishment and ask Allah Azza wa to bless him and to protect him, give him sincerity, and to let him benefit, inshallah Azza wa the Ummah of Al Islam. Secondly, I want to bring to your attention that there are some haters. This hardcore Salafi stuff that some brothers are on, this judgmental taqlid al a'ma, that ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to curse it. A taqlid al a'ma, when it's not even necessary. You must follow my sheikh. And if you don't follow my sheikh, then something is wrong with you. We oppose that stuff when we came into Al-Islam. When we saw the Asian community following Abu Hanifa blindly. When we saw the Asian community following their peers, following their mulvi sobs, following their imams blindly. The woman has to pray like this, and you have to do this, and you don't do this, you don't do that. And when you tell them the proof is against you, they just keep doing it. It's not just the Asian community, it's Africans, it's Arabs, it's the Muslims generally. Whatever group I belong to, whatever madhab I belong to, I'm going to tenaciously follow it and I'm going to throw away the kitab and the sunnah. As a result of that hizbiya, people who are supposed to be on the kitab and the sunnah, they opposed this man, this brother. They opposed him. They opposed him for no other reason aside from him not following what they believe and what they say or following what their sheikh tells them to do and so forth and so on. So we say that this brother Abu Abdul Razak, he is not ma'asum, he is not from the ulama of al-Islam, but people like us sitting in this room, people like us, especially people like me, reavers who came to the sunnah, we should be happy for such an incident occurring number three and finally number three and finally the fact that that brother 
is teaching in the Prophet's Masjid, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is a sign, it is an ayat right before our very eyes. It goes to prove, as Allah mentioned in the Quran, over and over and over again. Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. Allah can do anything that he wants to do. He can and he will do anything that he wants to do. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, if he wants something to happen, all he has to do is say to that thing, it, kun fayakun. Be and it's going to happen. I never imagined in my wildest dreams that I would be sitting here and I can pick up the Quran and read the Quran and understand the Quran or the Arabic language. Never imagined that in 1986 when I became a Muslim. Never imagined that in my wildest dreams. I never imagined when I met that brother, and I still remember the day, the two brothers who introduced me to him, Brother Anwar Asad and Abdul Rashid. When they introduced me to that brother, I never imagined in my wildest dreams that that brother would be teaching in the Prophet's Masjid, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alaihi Wasallam. So I want to tell you young people here and other than you young people, the sky is the limit. But if you're one of those people into this taqlid, al-a'ma, blind following, you're going to be a person who's not liberated. You're going to be in a cup or a glass and it's going to be sealed on you like that. Just thinking, but you're not thinking. The muqallid is the one who takes someone else's opinion and he doesn't know his dalil. Stupid. An imbecile, an idiot. You have an intellect. Someone has a PhD in some high science and he says, I can't think other than what the madhab says. I only can take the madhab. That's it. I'm only going to take what the sheikh said and that's it. Don't be like that. The muqallid is jahil and he shouldn't talk. Now there are issues where I have to make taqlid. There are issues where you have to make taqlid. The issue is big. One of the brothers just now in our audience, just now, he came up to me and said to me, Abu, can you tell me about pensions? Pensions, are they permissible, not permissible? I said, I don't know about that stuff. I don't know about pensions myself. So you have to ask someone who knows about that issue. So if I were to read something or someone brought me some information about what I don't know, I'll follow his opinion, but I'm going to look into the delil and the proofs to the best of my ability, but I know that there are some issues that are bigger than me. So I'll just take the position of a scholar and I'll zip my mouth, I'll zip my lip. I will not argue and debate with someone who took other than my opinion because I'm a muqallid, I'm jahil in that particular issue. So the sky is the limit for you brothers. You wanna go to Medina, you don't wanna go to Medina, you wanna be a professional, you wanna get a degree, PhD, and whatever science that you want to excel in, the sky is the limit. Provide it, provide it, you know Allah. You know Allah. If you know Allah, then you know anything is possible. You know anything is possible. People are not in a position to tell you you can't do. So once again, once again, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal by his ism al-a'zam to bless that brother and to also put the barakah in his efforts and to bless us as well, inshallah ta'ala, and to establish our feet firmly upon a salafiyah, a salafiyah haqqa, the real salafiyah. Not the salafiyah, a Sheikh Rabi said this and I must follow him. Yahya al said that and I must follow him. What is that? What is that?